Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. This is gonna be fun. Today, we are taking a look and a listen at a turntable by Retrolife. Now, in the past, we've reviewed a portable like suitcase player from them, but I don't think we've ever given their full-blown turntable a listen, so I'm very excited. You're not gonna wanna miss this. <music> Welcome to Racketology! So today we have this turntable from Retrolife, and I have a reasonable suspicion that we are going to like this one because it's based on the same design that we've seen a couple of times before that has done rather well. But I'm curious to see what extras, features, flourishes, etc., they have done on this particular unit. We have the bark brown version, and let's get into it. Now, I don't remember if Retrolife uses retail packaging, so, oh, they do. Okay, so there is another box in here. I mean, it looks handsome to me, I like it. It says, high fidelity sound from an Audio-Technica 3600 magnet stylus, it's close, magnetic cartridge. We know about that Audio-Technica cartridge, it's a good one. Two speeds, 33 and 45. Set adjustable counterweight force, okay. New upgrade craft, vibrations reduce and surround sound. Textured design, high class lacquer, brings the classic atmosphere. Solid aluminum die cast platter, remains stability and rotation to use. Replaceable magnet stylus, diamond tipped, for outstanding sound and prevention of unexpected resonances. Counterweight force, get perfect playback every time using the tone arm counterweight according to the record weight. Let's go ahead and open up the box. See what's inside. Probably a record player. Actually, this would qualify as a full blown turntable. All right, first things first, I am met with a, a smell. It <laughs> smells like um lacquer i mean it smells it's probably the finish of the plinth and we've got our dust cover here i love this type of packing design where they have like the indent around the edge for the dust cover to settle on top of and let me set the dust cover down we'll look a little deeper okay i just went ahead and took it out of the box so we've got the manual we've got an alignment protractor which is very cool we've got a 45 adapter have you heard that we now have a glow-in-the-dark 45 adapter? Check that out. I won't put a commercial in here, but there is a link down below if you wanted to do that. Was a, that was a viewer request. They're like, hey, why don't you do a glow-in-the-dark one? And I was like, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's do it. So we found out there is, in fact, glow-in-the-dark PLA. It's a little more brittle than regular PLA, but it still works good as a 45 adapter. We're still, still able to do the finishing work. To make it look as it should all right and what's interesting about it too is it glows two different colors if you put it outside it's a different color than if you uh you know charge it up with sunlight uh versus interior light it gives you two different colors when it glows all right so we got a power supply here i'm guessing that's probably a 12 volt power supply with a barrel connector over here we've got our counterbalance we'll get that out in a little bit the unit itself nothing on that side and if we lift it up you'll see the platter and in the back there another cord usb cord in that case let me go ahead and get the wrapping taken off and we'll get a closer look okay and there she is this is an amazing finish it is so glossy so thick of a varnish on here i can't even tell you definitely the source of what we were smelling uh, from a weight standpoint it's got a good heft to it it doesn't feel light and cheap it feels as though it should obviously this is going to be a belt driven turntable so we got the brass motor pulley there we got the main spindle right here it is freely rotating it doesn't have 
uh, a need for a crazy bearing on it with this design. It will be using the cast aluminum platter that you can see here. We've seen this on numerous other turntables. It works fine. Hopefully this particular one is cast in such a way that there's no platter wobble. That's the biggest thing. It's just kind of hit or miss with these, but this is good. There will be a ringing effect to it. So a platter mat is essential. They give you this felt one that comes with it. And you can obviously upgrade that as well. Belt driven, so there's the belt right there. And they put this little ribbon on there so it allows you to easily fit. In fact, let's just do it right now. You can easily fit this in a matter of seconds. So first, trying to find the middle is the hardest part. So just remove this sticker and this ribbon and gently pull around there and remove that. Now make sure it's on straight, but that's as simple as you can ask for in terms of, you know, getting a belt on. And then you put the platter mat and you're ready to rock and roll in terms of the platter. We need to take the uh, stylus guard on off. There was a little bit of tape on there as well. And you're pretty much ready to go. We'll put the dust cover on and give it a closer look next. I am getting a little ahead of myself as usual. Here is the counterbalance. We will want to put that on, of course, and I will go ahead and balance that, all that good stuff. Let's talk about the materials here. Obviously, this is probably an MDF plinth. Somebody asked recently what MDF stands for. It's medium density fiber board. Basically, think of it like a particle board. It's, it's a bunch of sawdust glued together into a loaf and then dried. It happens to have good sonic properties. So MDF is actually a really good material for a plinth. It also happens to be cheap to produce, so it's a win-win. These knobs right here feel, I think, I think they're plastic. I was gonna say they kind of feel metal. They feel cold to the touch. There are two position switches, start and stop, and 33 and 45. Um, the gimbal back here has a little bit of play, as you can see, not bad, not bad. This is a metal uh, gimbal assembly right here. This piece back here is metal. The tone arm itself is metal. And this is a plastic head shell, and we'll look at that closer in a minute. And then the base here is plastic. It does have a cueing lift, which is nice. So let's go ahead and put the... Uh, counterbalance on and I will go ahead and set that off camera. We've done that so many thousands of times by now. I don't want to bore you with that. So what is this cartridge and head shell assembly like up close? There's a pretty good look at it. So yeah, it's the Audio-Technica 3600L with the carbon fiber cantilever, the diamond tipped stylus. It is bonded. So it's a diamond chip at the end of a steel shank. Head shell is plastic. It's non-removable. However, there are uh, slots and screws there, so you can remove the whole cartridge and upgrade it if you wanted to. Although on this level of a turntable, you really wouldn't need to. I think that would be uh, that wouldn't be money well spent, in my opinion. I think 3600L will do a great job for this turntable, and it's affordable to replace as well. And the stylus alone is only about $25. And you can get it online for even cheaper than that. You can go online and get that stylus, especially if you get an off-brand one for like $12, $13. So cost of ownership on this level of turntable is nice and low with good performance. Okay, taking a quick look at the bottom here, you can see the MDF piece is solid. It is chiseled out on the bottom edge there with a black panel to allow the switches to get wiring from the main unit. The amplifier, all of the electronics are gonna be in this plastic box. This uses the three foot design, so it's got the best stability you could ask for. These are rubber feet that are screwed directly to the plinth itself. And right here, I'm pointing with my thumb, you can see the bottom side, it's a ball bearing that's bolted in there for the bottom of that center spindle bearing. So again, we've seen this design before. It's effective, it's good, it's quality. So far, thumbs up. Obviously, there's we, we gotta verify quite a few things. But so far, I'm not seeing any red flags. Okay, in the back right-hand corner, we can see the clip for the dust cover. I promise we'll put that dust cover on in a minute, as well as the power switch. And on this side, we've got the grounding post, the RCA outputs, the switch for the built-in preamp, we've got the USB socket, 
and the power supply socket. Oh yeah, and then there's a light for the Bluetooth. I'm not gonna test out the Bluetooth functionality. That's not that exciting to watch, but this will transmit to wireless speakers or headphones. Okay, that thing looks absolutely gorgeous with the dust cover on it. So obviously a polycarbonate dust cover. It's got little rubber stops here, which work as nice little lifts. And it's clear, it's completely clear, but I think it works. Usually I like a smoked dust cover, but this, this works with this combination. I think it looks really good. I love the chrome color accents. We'll continue testing here and do a direct feed sound test in a little bit as well. I want to talk about price for a moment. This comes in different colors. There's a white, a black, a kind of reddish wood one, and then this one, this, I forget, bark brown, I think is what they call it, this kind of dark brown look. If you get this one that I have, this color, this is going for like 129 on sale on Amazon as of the filming of this today, Saturday. And uh, normally I think it's like 152, which is what the other colors are priced at right now. So something to keep in mind, whatever sale is going on, I don't think is tied into the upcoming Prime Day. And it says 81% fulfilled or 81% utilized. So I don't know how long that price will last, but I'll put a link down below. So whatever the price is currently, you will see reflected in that link. All right, next thing I wanna do is uh, turn it on, see how the basic functionality works and go from there. Okay, just a note here. I just set the counterbalance and as you can see, it's all the way to the front. In order to get the 3.5 grams recommended for this cartridge, I did have to scoot it all the way to the front and instead of floating it, I actually decided to use my gauge. This gimbal isn't the greatest, so it was a little tricky trying to do that um, manually, which is, it works, but it's just less than ideal. If you have a scale, you can dial it in much better. This is 10 bucks online, no big deal. So just something to be aware of, 3.5 max, 3.5 grams with this cartridge is a max, that it will facilitate, and thankfully that's the, the requirement for this. Um, it would be nice for there to be some play back and forth a little bit. That was weird. I unplugged the power supply a couple of times, put it in and out, and it seemed to come to life. I don't know why. I think I've seen that happen before, but, you know, something you'd want to be aware of. Uh, so, yeah, it's in the start mode, the on mode, whatever. If I flip this to stop, the uh, platter will stop rotating. Again, this isn't a power switch for the unit. The power switch is back there. And the reason why this even has a power switch is for the Bluetooth functionality. Otherwise, all you would need is a start and stop for the platter, and that's it. You know, a lot of turntables don't really have an on and off switch per se, but because this has the Bluetooth functionality, it does. So anyhow, that's uh, how you start and stop it, fully manual. So if we turn it on and then move the tone arm to the center, nothing will happen. It's not gonna auto stop. This thing is just gonna keep spinning and spinning. So don't fall asleep while your records are playing, although I have never done that. On the plus side of it being fully manual, you can play three inch records or, you know, kind of novelty stuff like that, no problem. And this is a switch for the speeds. We'll check the speed consistency here in a minute. But first, I'm curious about platter wobble. I think I see a little bit even from here, but let's take a closer look. And what we wanna be looking at here is the bottom edge of the platter, because the platter mat can be kind of an illusion. Um, yeah, it's got some it's got some wobbles kind of drifting up and down. It's not crazy bad, but it is not perfect by any means. Okay, this is a strobe warning for people that are sensitive to strobes, flashing lights, things of that nature. We're going to be looking right here for 33 RPM, and here we go. Okay, you can see those lines are moving a little bit to the left there. That means it's a tad bit fast. Not terribly bad. We may or may at this this is kind of the threshold of you may or may not notice uh the pitch being off with that much of a variance let's go to 45 which will be right here and typical it's a similar proportion of of speed inconsistency there so a tad bit fast once you put the record on the needles you know dragging on the record that'll slow down a tiny bit but something again that we want to always check i think this is acceptable it's just not ideal it can be adjusted, but that adjustment is a pain in the butt. It is time for a direct feed sound test using my Zoom digital audio recorder. And as you can see, I've got it connected up directly to the back of the unit. 
For a test subject today, we're gonna to be using another Enoch Light album, but this is not the typical one. This is some 60s music. Action, 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 action. It's happening, so let's dance. And this is a, a cool record. Definitely would recommend picking it up. So let's give it a test, and I'll be back at the end with my final thoughts. <laughs> thought it sounded pretty dang good and overall I think this is a good turntable there were a couple of issues we had the anti-skate missing we had a little bit of platter wobble speed was not ideal it was very close though I'm still gonna give this a pass and give it a thumbs up especially for the price we're talking about $129 on sale I think that's fantastic for a beginner would love to hear your comments down below let me know what you think but most importantly, my friends, thank you for watching. Happy record hunting, and we'll see you next time.